That's what she. What's up guys, Tony Hannity's here from Lazy Tech TV and today I want to revisit a technology that we actually reviewed a few months back, more so than six months ago, maybe seven or eight months ago, give or take. This is the Ring Video Doorbell. Now this is a very cool entry-level-esque way for the everyday person to get into a smart home without having to redo the whole smart home. For those of you who haven't checked it out, uh, I'll leave a link in the video description below to see the actual initial review of the Ring Video Doorbell, but we gave it pretty much two thumbs up, maybe one and a half. There was a couple of issues that I came across, mainly because my front door also has a metal gate. So what I figured out was that if I had a stronger Wi-Fi repeater as close to that as possible, then that would be better to get the Wi-Fi doorbell connected to my Wi-Fi and hence connected to my mobile devices. And that was the case for a while. The big thing about a video doorbell is that it needs to be real time. Somebody walks into the proximity area of the sensor, the sensor needs to go off immediately. And if the sensor is set to be a certain distance from the video doorbell itself, it needs to be aware of that distance. I'll give you an example. On the application itself, I set the distance to be only five feet, which for those of you in metric is something different. How much is five feet in meters? Five feet equals 1.524 meters. There you go. Five feet, not too far, not too short. It's almost perfect just to be aware of the people coming up to the door to drop off packages, to try and sell me something, whatever. But farther out, maybe 10 feet, a car drives by, the ring video doorbell still goes off. Now I was ensured that this was a technology that took into account little tiny things like if a bug flies by, it's not gonna go off. You know, if a dog runs out, probably not gonna go off. But the fact that a car 10 feet away still registers that it's five feet and it signals the video doorbell to alert me, that's a little disconcerting. Now the one time I really need to use the ring video doorbell was in my trip to uh, Disneyland. Ever so often, my wife and I, we, we both have the video doorbell application on our phone it would, uh, it would go off and we would see nothing. Sometimes we would see something, uh, but majority of the time we would see nothing. So there's two things there. Either we are surrounded by ghosts that for whatever reason are uh, sensed by an infrared camera, I don't know, or uh, the camera itself is a little too sensitive even to the fact of what you uh, measure out in the application itself. Nevertheless, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. i rather get notifications than never get notifications and then come home to a house that's been completely vandalized. And again, if you do subscribe to their monthly package at $3 a month, uh, you have all of the recordings, so you can always go back and just make sure that there wasn't something suspicious or creepy. But there were some other issues, which I, again, I don't really have an answer for, except for the fact that I have a metal gate. So this will probably not apply to a lot of you, but it might apply to a few subset of you. Set, sub, subset. It might apply to a few subset of you if you have such gates of made of corrugated metal or whatever that's meant. It's not corrugated, it's metal, metal. Sometimes I would get a notification. It's not just a motion notification, it's a full on somebody stepped up, rang my doorbell notification, boom, it's on my phone, click on my phone to be able to answer it and I just see a blank screen. That does nothing, although I do hear audio. So again, Wi-Fi, radios, metal, not happy, not happy, don't, don't do that. And then connecting to my uh, repeater, connecting to my wireless, maybe there's too many like intermediary parts going on. Uh, sometimes it happened when I was using my phone over a hotspot in another location, like at a Starbucks or a Staples or something. Sometimes it wouldn't work in that regard. So I guess my point is, what is my point? Oh, it's not consistent. It's not consistent. And, and here's the weird thing. So I would see nothing and then I would call my wife and like, did you come home? Yes, I did. That's not what she sounds like. And then uh, I, I would look back 
at the recording and the recording would be there. So the video doorbell was able to record what it saw and then it stored it, cached it, and then sent, sent it up to the ring cloud. I, I was able to watch it after the fact, but doing it live was not possible. And again, this wasn't an issue every single time. It's just not consistent. And so I think the last thing that really irked me using Ring, and it's partly my fault. I, I won't put the whole blame on them. See, what happens is you have two ways to power the Ring. One, which would be a better way, is to actually loop it into your house's power supply so you don't have to worry about charging it every other month or what, whatever the case is. And mind you, when, when you do turn on the motion detector, if you turn on to be um, a larger range or you know, if you be more specific uh, with the zones that you're trying to be detected, uh, that's gonna draw more battery. The nice thing though is the application or rather uh, Ring will send you an email saying, hey, you're getting close to your battery being zero. You might want to unscrew it from the stock and, uh, and charge it. I got a few of those emails and I was one of those really totally awesome people that said, I'll charge it when it's ready. And I mean, it was pretty much ready last week. So I finally charged it. And so I charged it from zero to 100%, good to go. And I hit the button to, you know, I hit the button on the front just to sense it, just to make sure that it still had motion sense and everything. And because it was fully discharged, it also fully disconnected from my Wi-Fi network. So then I had to reconnect it to my Wi-Fi network. That must be easy. No, not at all. My daily driver, for those who don't know, is a very beautiful but terrible, uh, op <laughs> terrible Nexus 6, and that might that actually is a, a kind of part of this. I open up the Ring or the Ring app, and I, I set it up to be reconnected with the video doorbell. I'm literally standing right next to the Ring video doorbell, and it's just not connecting whatsoever. And then I said, "Ha ha! There's an issue with this phone." because I have issues with this phone with other things. So I'm not gonna put that on Ring necessarily, uh, but I do want it to be a PSA. If you have a Nexus 6 and Ring, you might wanna set it up on something else like uh, Windows 10, uh, which there is an app for, by the way, uh, an iPad, another Android phone, whatever the case is. So I've got a bunch of Android phones. This is my OnePlus X. And so I started to set it up on here and connecting it to my D-Link. My D-Link is right there. I set the Ring Video Doorbell on top of it and I use the app to uh, connect to it and lo and behold, it still couldn't find the D-Link. Uh, in the troubleshooting, I had to do some gateway changes and stuff like that, which in effect kind of screwed up all my other internet of things that I have out here, all the other cameras. So that's something else I have to deal with. So in the end, what did I do? I just connected it to my neck ear Nighthawk router, which is my standard router upstairs in my bedroom. The router, which initially it wouldn't connect to, and now it seems to be connecting because as you can see here, both phones recognize the motion, they recognize the ring, they take the video with the door closed. For right now, the Netgear Nighthawk seems to be running okay. I guess the point of this whole video, of what I'm trying to convey to you guys is this. We have the technology, but it's not 100% there yet. To a certain degree, with all due respect to Ring and its products and other companies that do similar things of this nature, there is a point where the old adage comes in, you get what you pay for. Ring is very inexpensive, which is very good for a low barrier entry, but there are certain things that you have to expect that may or may not work consistently 100% of the time. Three, four years from now, five years from now, may, maybe, maybe it will only take two years from now, something will come of age and it will be a much better experience. Maybe it's the ring, maybe it's Wi-Fi signals, maybe just something that makes all of our lives so much easier that this whole video is negated and we no longer have to worry about IP addresses and gateways and wireless uh, repeater setups and things like that. So I'm still gonna use the ring. I'm not giving up on that. It is still, in my heart of hearts, I still believe that it is a good first line of defense for at least something. 
Well, even though it is late, should something happen, it's gonna record it. Like, I'm still gonna see you coming up to the Ring Video doorbell to put tape on it. Don't try and say that it's completely a waste of money. It's like having a, a CCTV camera outside your house. It's just like that, except it has a doorbell attached to it. At the end of the day, I know Ring has kind of heard us a little bit. They have a Ring Video Doorbell Pro, which I can't personally use because it needs to be fully hooked into the house's electrical system. But I've heard that that sensor is a little bit better than this Ring Video Doorbell. So things are progressing, which is good. And things are gonna get so much better in this kind of niche market of the world. So the best thing I could say to you guys, if you're still wondering, should I get a Ring Video Doorbell? Try it out, just try it out. I read their terms and conditions on exchanges and things like that, if I'm being honest, but because I don't know at the top of my head. Um, but just try it out because it is a lot off your shoulders once it is set up. In my opinion, it's definitely better than nothing. So that's it for me right now. I really appreciate your time. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave that in the section below. Please go to Lazy Tech TV on YouTube. That's just YouTube slash Lazy Tech TV and look up the Ring Video Doorbell uh, review. Uh, we're also, like I said, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus. Uh, that's still a thing. Feed, that's not a thing. And uh, we'll talk to you guys in the next one. Late.